Hi, I'm Taylor. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've been here before. I'm an American expat living in Malaysia, and I like to share my experiences and my life with you. I've lived here now for seven and a half years in Malaysia, and I've seen a lot of things that I think are different than they are in the U.S. or maybe other places in the world too. So I just wanna go through a few of them with you and see if you agree. Are they different to you or are they familiar to you? We'll see. First of all, I'm gonna go through things that I found different for me inside the apartment. After that, we'll talk about things outside in restaurants and on the street and traffic, things like that. And then maybe just a few things that are just different in general. So, first we're gonna start, well, maybe an awkward place to start is in the bathroom. When I moved to Malaysia, I was really surprised that there was this thing, like a hose next to the toilet. I had no idea what it was for. But as probably many of you in the world know, and certainly everyone in Malaysia, it's called a butt gun. Now, it has its obvious purpose, of course, but you can also use it to clean the bathroom, which I'll show you here. Now in the US, we don't have these, and we certainly wouldn't start spraying water all over the bathroom to clean it because it would just <laughs> flood your place. But here in Malaysia, all the bathrooms I have seen have a drain in the middle of the floor or in the corner, anywhere, anywhere that's convenient. So you can spray it all down and the water just goes down the drain. Very convenient. There's also a little lip at the bathroom door so that the water doesn't get out onto the rest of the apartment, which is a real good feature. Another thing that's different here in bathrooms, we'll stay in the bathroom for now, are the water heaters. In the U.S., you have these big tanks somewhere in the attic or in the hall closet that stay on all the time heating your water and making sure you have hot water at a moment's notice. Here, you have to turn on a switch outside the door, and for the most part, you have immediate hot water, and that's amazing. There's some things like this, which hang on the wall near the shower, but I found in a lot of bathrooms, particularly master bathrooms, they put a tank in the ceiling so it can heat the hot water in the shower and the sink. Now, that's another thing. Most sinks don't have hot water, although, like I just said, they do have it usually in the master bath. But your powder room's not gonna have hot water because there's no need. You won't take a shower in there. Another thing I learned early on, which is quite important to know, is that a lot of public restrooms don't have toilet paper in the stalls. Now, they might have some as you enter that you're supposed to collect and take with you. But, like everywhere else, they do have your butt gun. But if you've forgotten the toilet paper, I'm afraid you're gonna be out of luck there. I learned this lesson very quickly. Now we'll move into the kitchen. This is something that I found really, really surprising here, is that kitchen sinks don't have hot water either. Now I suppose in really high-end places you do, and you certainly could put a water heater under the sink, which I would do if I owned a place here. I find it hard to wash dishes with just cold water because the cold water just doesn't get the grease off. I find myself having to heat the kettle up and pour hot water in the sink just to get my dishes done. But it's not that bad. Another thing in the kitchen is that the refrigerator doors only open one way. Now that's fine if your kitchen is designed around that one way, but if it's not, it can be awkward. My last apartment in Penang, it opened towards the dining area. So if you were doing anything in the kitchen, it was, it was just sort of not the best. In the U.S., you can buy re your refrigerator opening this way or opening this way. I think they should try that here in Malaysia. It would really help things in some kitchens. I found that the laundries are generally in the kitchen or adjacent to the kitchen. Most places have a washer, like I've mentioned before, but almost nobody has a dryer. They use these clothing racks that they usually put out on the balcony, or if you don't have a balcony, you're just gonna have to set it up in your apartment. I don't think that's really very attractive. So in my last two places, I've had a dryer, one I had to purchase. Now I have a combo washer and dryer. And while that works, 
I don't find the dryer is that spectacular, but it's better than hanging out on the rack if you ask me. Another thing that's different in the kitchen is that most cooktops are gas or propane here. Now, I've never seen that. I don't think they have gas lines, natural gas lines run here in Malaysia because every apartment I've had that has a gas cooktop, you have a propane tank like you use for barbecues in the US under the sink and you just attach it to that. Now that seemed really scary to me at first, but you get used to it and if it runs out, you just make a quick phone call and someone rushes a can right over to you. It's also pretty inexpensive. One more thing in the kitchen that I've noticed is that almost nowhere has ovens unless you're in a really upscale place. Second place had an oven and I used it quite a bit. And then for my third place, I got a countertop oven, which worked pretty well. But if you've seen the tour of my apartment, you've seen how tiny the kitchen is and I really don't have counter space for an oven. So I'm getting by right now just with an air fryer and that seems to work pretty well when you're only cooking for two people or just yourself. Okay, let's talk about a couple of things that are opposite that I'm used to. I don't know, in the US, when you turn on a light switch, you push it up. Here it's the opposite, you push down to, for on and up for off. I'll show you here. Maybe that's not really up or down, but it, anyway, it's the opposite of what I'm used to. Another very controversial thing that's opposite for me is everyone backs into their parking space here. Now, I get the theory that it's much better to come out of a parking space from the front, but in parking garages, it just is a nightmare waiting for people to back in. It's much easier to back out, but I've had many arguments with Malaysians and they just refuse to agree or change. I don't know, it's probably not better one way or the other, but I just think heading in is faster and gets you out of the way of traffic going by, particularly in a very crowded parking garage. But that's the way it is and you get used to it. You'll notice right away when you live in a country like Malaysia that you don't wear your shoes inside the apartment or anyone else's home. You take your shoes off at the door and leave them there. Now, a lot of places, that I've lived have a little gate outside that you can lock. And then inside the gate, between the gate and the front door of the apartment, is a closet or a, a cabinet that you can keep shoes in, which is really handy. I've gotten quite used to not wearing shoes in the apartment, and it bothers me when I see somebody leave their shoes on now. Another thing that's different here is that I have never seen anyone have a window screen. Now you would think in a tropical climate, there, everyone would have a window screen so that you wouldn't get bugs and mosquitoes in your apartment. Now, I have to say, I've always lived up fairly high, like I'm on the 28th floor now, so bugs really aren't a problem flying in your window, but there are some bugs in some seasons that are pretty unpleasant and do fly in at night, especially if you have the lights on. There's something here called the Rove Beetle, R-O-V-E, it's a very innocent looking little insect, but believe me, if one gets on you, you're gonna remember it for a long time. I don't know what it is. I think they have some sort of poison in them and it just makes like a burn on your skin, sometimes quite severe. I've only had it once, but I've found them in my apartment many times. Not in this new one in KL. I think it's probably more likely near the jungle like I lived in Penang. Another different thing, is that they don't like the number four. And I think this is a Chinese thing. I think that means death or something like that. So there's no apartment number fours, there's no fourth floor, there's no 14th floor, there's no 24th floor. Instead, they use A. I've already lived in two apartments that are 3A, which is technically four, but 3A gets you away from using the number four. Also with apartments, there's very little central air conditioning. Now I have it in my current unit, but all my other apartments have the little individual wall units. And those are nice. I really like it because you don't have to cool the whole place down. If you're in the living room, you can have it on there. If you're in the bedroom, you can have it on there. It's so much less wasteful. It really saves a lot of electricity, I can tell you that. 
Also, I forgot to mention when I was talking about it, but it's the same thing with the water heaters. Because you have a switch to turn them on and off and only turn them on when you need them, that saves a lot of electricity too. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to holidays. Because in Malaysia, it seems like every other day is a holiday, which is wonderful. Especially if you get off work for it, which many people do. When Malaysia was founded, it was intended to be multicultural and to respect all religions. So in the US, we really only recognize Christian holidays, but here in Malaysia, they recognize Islamic holidays and Buddhist holidays and Indian holidays and Christian holidays. So you've got a bunch of holidays. Isn't that great? It doesn't really affect me much, but I certainly would have loved that growing up here if I had gone to school and gotten that many days off. I think it keeps the people happy though, too, to have so many holidays. It's always nice. Okay, in general, in the US, I've counted they have seven major public holidays a year. Christmas, Easter, that sort of thing. But in Malaysia, they have 16 public holidays a year, plus any state ones. Each state will have their own special holidays on top of the public holidays for the whole nation. It's just great. So now we'll go outside. One thing you'll notice here in Malaysia is that there's a lot of open drains, um, just drainage on the side of the road or by sidewalks, but it can be pretty scary. I had a friend who fell in one and was hurt quite badly. You really need to watch out, but you know, it's just sort of common sense, something we don't have much of in the US, I don't think. For instance, in the US, everybody would be suing people if they fell into a drain. Here, they just think it's your own fault. And really, it is. <laughs> Another thing, our curbs are extremely tall. Not really made for old people or the infirm. But I manage. You can see me here trying to get up a curb. I still can do it, but I have to put my hand on my knee and give myself a little push. Now, I've noticed more and more they do have handicap cutouts for wheelchairs and stuff. And even in the sidewalks, they have guide marks for blind people. Okay. Now you all know I drive a motorcycle or a Vespa scooter, actually. I had to take lessons before I got my license. And boy, are the lessons different than reality. You'd never believe there were any rules at all for motorcycles when you're out on the road, but there are. You're supposed to stop behind the white line. You're not supposed to race up between the cars. You're not supposed to go the wrong way on one-way streets, but all of that stuff and more is constantly done. You really have to keep vigilant to stay out of trouble. Also, if you have an accident with a motorcycle, it's always the car's fault, never the motorcyclist, which can be frustrating. Of course, you drive on the left here too, which I found only took me about 30 minutes to get used to, unless I'm on a road that doesn't have other cars on it, and then sometimes my brain reverts back to driving on the right. Now, you know there's a lot of traffic here, I mean, Malaysia's famous for traffic, <laughs> not in a good way. But what surprises me is that there's very little horn honking and people are quite considerate about letting you in. If you're turning into traffic out of a parking lot, most people will let you in. That's quite different than the US, I find. Well, here's a couple things that I've noticed in restaurants here. First of all, particularly in the very casual eateries like the Mamox, you're probably not going to get a napkin. Now, I have been in some places where old people go around selling little packets of tissues, but most people just learn to have them in their bag because you never know when you're not going to get a napkin. And of course, in nicer restaurants, they give them to you, but not always. Sometimes you have to ask. Another wonderful thing here in restaurants is that there's virtually no tipping. Now, I'm so used to tipping from the United States that I sometimes leave a little bit, but I get scolded by Malaysians who say, you're just ruining it for everybody because then they're gonna expect it to be tipped. I have noticed more and more restaurants have a service charge, about 10%, which I suppose goes to the servers, but I don't know. Anyway, I've found that except in very, very fine restaurants, the servers don't really, um, how should I say this? Um, care? <laughs> well, I can't say that completely because sometimes they're very nice. But in a lot of places, 
They just don't care. I have so rarely been asked how my food is or is everything okay, things you're constantly asked in the United States, almost to an annoying level. But here, they just take your order, bring your food, and then when you're done, you go up to the counter to pay. I don't wanna make it sound worse than it is because really there's a lot of lovely people working in restaurants. Also, I'm gonna talk a little bit about safety and how safe I feel in Malaysia. My goodness, in the US, as I've said before, I could occasionally hear gunshots outside my window. That's really scary. But here, there's virtually no guns. And people don't complain about it, go figure. But that said, I've never lived anywhere where I felt safer. The people are kind. Now, of course, there is still crime, as I've mentioned before. There is crime. But I feel safe walking around at night, even if I'm alone. Now, I guess if I was a woman, I would be a little more cautious. But as a man, I feel totally safe and not afraid that I'm gonna get mugged or something, which is a really nice thing. Okay, so I've hoped you've enjoyed some of these differences that I've noticed since living in Malaysia. I hope you take it in the right spirit as I don't mean to be critical at all. Some of it's just kind of funny. And I'm sure it doesn't seem unusual at all to Malaysians, anything I've mentioned. Once again, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks again for watching. I'll be back with more videos soon. Talk to you later. Bye.